Good morning. We want to start so we can keep moving. Um, yeah, that's right. If we could create space, squish together, find somebody you like, sit on their lap. No, not really. All right, so when people come in, they can find a seat. Um, let's pray and we'll get started. Thanks, Lord, for a chance to gather as a church to really rejoice over what you've done with us. Over the next four weeks, we will be considering some strong thoughts, um, but thoughts that you have forced us into. Ephesians talks about how we must find out what is pleasing to the Lord. And uh, we admit that we are simply men and women who use the mind of a man and a woman. Uh, but we readily admit, humbly admit, that your thoughts are greater than ours and different than ours, and your ways are different as well. We want you to teach us what you want to do. There's been a lot of prayer, a lot of work, a lot of thought. Um, we're going to look forward to more prayer. But uh, it has been astounding. And we, uh, we as elders look forward to presenting this to your people. Some of it will be obvious and uh, some will be unique. Unify us. Cause us to walk together in these thoughts. Uh, for we have enjoyed that unity for many years. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, first, uh, because Ray's gone, uh, we want to tell you that these ideas uh, are not unique just to the three that are still here. Ray is fully aware of all this. Uh, all four of us are in unity on these things we're going to present to you the next three to four weeks. And it, that's important. We want you to know we've prayed about it. We've considered a lot of options. What you're going to see today, one of the things, the first thing we're going to start with is just our building and where we are with growth. And uh, quite frankly, it was a surprise how fast we grew. And uh, we have, we've, we've pursued a lot of options. Uh, options as far as going and looking at other people's churches and talking about swaps and throwing in extra money and that kind of thing. Uh, we've talked about building, buying and building and all that kind of stuff. At this point in time, what we're going to present this morning is the most efficient way that we have come up with after a lot of work. We've talked to bankers, we've done all kinds of stuff. And what I want to begin with this morning is by showing you our growth path. Uh, I'll, let's bring it up. After you adjust your image. Okay. This is the last eight years from December of 03 to December of, of 11. Uh, this has been our membership growth, not our attendance growth, so I'll show you that in a minute, but... Here we were at 73 members, here we're at 200 members uh, in eight years. You'll see a couple dips here. Uh, this one right here is when Lee went off for his uh, PhD, and so there was a, a little bit of a decline, didn't last long, and we took the, then we planted the Martin Church right here. But as you'll notice, and I'll show you later with the statistics, giving away 17 members to plant a church did not cause a lack of growth. We continued to grow. So um, I wanted you to see that. That's a picture. Let me move on to, let's see, I think this one. Yes. All right. This has been the amount of growth, and remember that in here, we also gave away 17 members. Okay, So as you can see, there's been a steady incline in growth. The, the last two years, we've taken in 50 new members. Okay, 25. 
Just to let you know where we're going this year so far, we have 10 waiting to be announced. Uh, starting by the end of February so far, we'll have 10 that are waiting to be announced to become members. So our membership growth is fast at this point in time. Okay? The fastest, you might say, well, let's plant some more churches. The fastest growth period we ever had <laughs> was right after he planted a church. So it doesn't work. <laughs> All right? Give away 17, I think we took in 37, didn't we? In that next year from the time they left our building. So, you know, it's one of those deals, given you shall receive, pressed down, shaken together. It doesn't work. So if you're using church planning as a thought of how to deal with growth, you have to stop. Uh, okay. Everybody got this so far? And if there's questions, raise your hand. I don't mind fielding them. All right, here we go. Now, let's move down a little bit. This has been our attendance now. Can you all see that? Maybe not. Hold on, I'll make it easier. Better? OK. There is a rule in attendance, whether it be churches or what, that usually your growth in your meetings can only handle 80% of your chairs. Okay, so there's 20% space. They say if it gets much beyond that, people just won't come because they don't want to be all nestled together like you are right now for some reason. Okay? What we have had happen, and it's been extraordinary, but this is the high end, okay? So we went from 248 people in 2009, that's when we moved into our new, redone, the, when we redid the building. Went to 284, 285 twice. As you can see, with these two years, and right now we're setting 336 chairs, these two years represent 85% of the chairs that we have out. So we are topping off just like the statistics say, only just a little bit higher. So we're pushing it. People want to be here. Second thing is, you'll notice that our lows, and this is when all the college students are gone, it's Christmas or whatever, like if you were here Christmas, like I was, holy smokes, I don't know where everybody was, all right? They were out celebrating Jesus somewhere, <laughs> but it wasn't here. All right, but you can see that it's, it's grown there. Our average attendance each year has gone up 20 here, 19 here. So even our average is producing. Now with the students here, average attendance has gone up to 235, and without students every year. It's a constant growth. There's nothing stopping. There's no area that you can look at that says it's not happening. So then you might say, well, are there certain months of the year And as you can see, this is as far as back as we tracked monthly, as you can see, there's not a month that has gone by that the average attendance has not gone up. Thus, we have a problem. Okay? Now, every, any questions so far? Everybody see the pattern? All right. Based on... I'll make this bigger. Okay. Based on this, when we redid our building, uh, because we did not expect this type of growth to happen as quickly, we set this up, the sanctuary right now, where legally it costs, it, we're allowed to set 299 seats. And that does include those who are in the sound booth. So... Right now, we're setting 336 in order to handle this 85%. The reason that we didn't do it then is because we, that was about the major amount of room we had in our building there without tearing into other places. And you would have to put about a forty dollars to $50,000 sprinkler system and alarm system in when you go above the 299. Well, we're at that point. So there are two things that could happen. One is, we turn people away at the door. 
That is, we reduce back down from 336 seats to 299 seats. And anybody that comes in that doesn't want to sit on the floor or whatever, which you're not allowed to do that either, by the way, um, they have to be turned away. So you could say, let's do that with our visitors. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed. <laughs> Even worse, let's say that the visitors come before some of the members, because none of you show up on time all the time, <laughs> right? Now, let's say that you and your six children show up late because one of them has been vomiting that morning and the other one poked the other one in the eye. You don't get to sit. We're going to tell you to go home, okay? Well, that doesn't work with us. So, uh, to deal with the growth that's necessary at this point in time, and we did it, add a, a baptismal. This is what we've come up with, and I apologize, but we put this upside down because the sanctuary is here. All right, but you'll get the point. Everybody see this okay? I know you may not be able to read the words, but here's what we're proposing. This room that we're in and Lee's office right here be ripped out and added to the sanctuary, okay? And this, these chairs aren't really facing correctly. It would be more U-shaped. There's no sense pointing chairs to look out here, but you'll get the point. This sanctuary will seat uh, about 500, maybe a little more, depending on how we situate the chairs, okay? Right now we can do 336. At the 80% rule, it would allow us to seat 425 people. If we go to the 85% rule, maybe 440, somewhere around there, and still have some room. Uh, everybody with me so far? Okay. <clears throat> this up here, uh, it's additional. That is, right now, the stage is here, because these are the poles. These poles really represent this wall to get a bearing. Okay, the stage is here. We're saying move the stage over and put in a baptismal. So this right here, that's what you're seeing right here is a baptismal. 12 foot long, uh, eight feet is exposed with a window. Then there's a platform here to get out, dressing rooms on both sides, and some storage for the musicians on either side of that. And then the stage is push, pushed out seven feet from where it is now depth-wise. Everybody with me so far? Oh, yes, I do take a broom. <laughs> All right, everybody with me? Okay, so baptismal, changing rooms, and some storage. Then this is a 500-seat sanctuary. Any questions so far? Everybody got it? Okay, good. This right here is our fellowship hall. Everybody see it over here? Okay. Fellowship Hall. We will make a new prayer room set up just like this one, only with 30 linear feet more seating in, as far as the tiers go. And the center, of course, would be much bigger. And the creation of two classrooms. These are about 21 feet long. There will be an entrance here uh, like this one. And then there'll be, of course, the doors that we have going out next to the kitchen now. The thought was uh, discussed about turning it so that the kitchen would have its own little room. It would take up more room, reduce the size of classrooms, and we're not opposed to having a little kitchenette here in case we want to have conferences or something like that. Okay? Everybody see that as well? All right. Then this, this is our dungeon, if you'll remember the dungeon up here. And the dungeon will also be turned into a classroom. We should explain to visitors that that's not really what it is. <laughs> no. I think it's more impressive. Oh, the, the statement was made, I'm being told, repeat. The statement was made, that's not what it really is. I think it's really impressive that we've grown at this rate with a dungeon. Okay? That is, you must behave here. Uh, no. It's just a storage place. But back before we remodeled, this whole area right here was this cavernous throw things in it place. 
and we just nicknamed it the dungeon. <laughs> and uh, we will have no dungeon left if we go through with this. It's a sad thing. So there'll be an outbuilding that we can lock you in. <laughs> to put. All right, so uh, this, now Lee's office, you say, what are we going to do with the boy? Well, we're going to have to put him up in here. This is where Lance is now meeting, and Lance will be allowed to take, you know, one of these two, three classes that we're creating. Church office, library, and some of, the, we, we think we're going to put a desk in here as well to utilize this room better. All right, there's the l new layout that we're proposing. Any questions so far? There's no fellowship hall we're meeting in the dungeon? No, not really. <laughs> yeah, you're right. There is no fellowship hall. Um, it's one of the things we had to sacrifice with the growth. We will be putting extra money in the budget. Most of our fellowships we have been able to handle outside, but we're going to put some extra money in the budget to rent facilities for us so that we can move off-site. Most of the time we have them in the park, but if the weather's bad or it's wintertime, then we're going to have to do something different. Yeah, you're right. What else? Right here. That's the part of this you can't. See, I hung this so the words were right side up. There was, you know, but this says pastor's office. And yes, he'll have another window and all that business. So. For some reason, he likes to look out the window. All right, any questions? All right, according to our banker, uh, oh, another thing. With uh, any public facility that seats multiple people, you have to have one parking space per three chairs. They don't care if you're all riding in giant vans. If you have a bus, they don't care. You must have one, seat per th one parking space for three seats. If we were in the county, we could put it in gravel. But the city has a, a law that states it has to be blacktop or concrete, bottom line. Okay, So that's an additional expense. Where will the parking be? Uh, we'll simply carry our parking lot around, we, you know, where we put some gravel down. We'll have to extend it almost to where that big tree is out back. It'll take up that whole space. We'll add about another 50 parking spaces. We have 127 right now. Okay. We should, even, even now, sorry, go but no. But even now, David counted on a day when we had 272 people, which is less than our high. Mm -hmm. We had um, the gravel pool and only three in the slot. Okay, that's right. What Lee says, because David monitors all that for us, is that even with the gravel that we've added, uh, when we had only 272 here, which is not our high, David said there was only three spots left. So we need some parking. And we need some of you all to think about not driving separately or whatever, you know, like husband and wives come together. And I'm saying this because I drove separately today. I got here early. But in most cases, that's what we'd like to do. Yes, Allison. Uh-huh. The question is, with families expanding, what are we going to do about the nursery situation? Uh, we have outlawed whatever causes new babies. <laughs> now, if you know me, you know that's not true. <laughs> All right, so, okay. So, no, you're, no, it's a great question. It's one of the reasons we've added these two classrooms. Because what's happened is, is we have several classes that already have 17, 19, or whatever in them. Ask our teachers. Uh, that's the ones that are bald on one side. Uh, so what we're looking at doing is actually dividing some of those larger classes by age group with a, with a little bit older kids. And that's why we want to pop two big classrooms right into this area, because it's close to here. These are classrooms here as well. So that's part of the pro problem we're trying to solve is the expansion of our families. Okay. It's a good question. What else? Yes? Did I hear you say that when you take out this wall, you're going to have beams for pillars here? Yeah, we have to. That's structurally. They're there already. They're just next. Oh. 
Yes, the question was, will we still have pillars there? Yes, we will. Uh, we have two here now, one right here, one right here. These two are hidden in this wall, but they're actually there. That's why we have line of sight aisles. If you'll notice, this is the pulpit. So wherever that pulpit sits, if it's up front here, it doesn't matter. Those aisles will come across there. Does that make sense? Oh, and by the way, and we'll add this, I'll add this in while we're looking at this. We do understand that sound is a problem even right now with as many people as we have. That is up front, like I'm, I'm kind of the weird guy because I sit in the back and then if I come up front, you know, to do the benediction or a prayer or whatever, it's amazing the difference. It's like you folks actually do sing. In the back, I think I'm the only one. If you come up front, you hear all this noise coming from behind you. It's, it's exhilarating. Part of the problem is, as well, is that we have speakers that are up front, but they can only project so far, and by the time they get to the back, we lose a lot of things. Okay? So this new setup will have directional speakers in them. That is, they're, they project to whatever part of the congregation they need to go. There'll be extra ones back up in here projecting out. Or maybe they're here projecting. I don't know where Bill and John have them thought through, but um, to where this, the sound will be c corrected because 500 people absorb a lot of sound. One of the other things we love about this, and if these chairs were turned correctly, but this is actually a U, and so to some degree we're going to be singing to each other, which is nice. Uh, all these side pieces here will be turned and so instead of having just one mass singing forward you're going to see other people worshiping all over the sanctuary which should be a joy okay other questions yes uh -huh. right question is are we going to go to one class for Sunday school instead of having two no we'll still keep two our guess is is that one will meet right here and one will meet here Great questions. What else? Yes? Good question. Uh, right now we have, well, how many, thank you. <laughs> Jeremy's time is going to get tired. Uh, how many, uh, where will the screens be? We will go to two screens instead of having one so that they'll be here and here somewhere and that way groups can see. They'll be, have a small angle to them so that you can see basically across this way and of course straight forward. So there'll be two projectors that are running simultaneously. Somebody else had a hand up. Okay. Anything else? Yes. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, as thought as growth continues, what's our thoughts about more deacons, more elders? Should I dive in yet? Okay. <laughs> you jump, jump in the gun. We just finished talking about this. All right. <clears throat> in our proposals that will be coming in the next couple of weeks. We, do, we have had a, one vocational pastor here. Actually, you know, in the graph I showed you from 2003, I remember 2001, we only had about 45 members. Okay? From uh, that time, we've had one vocational elder, 45 members, all the way to 200 members. Okay? And by the way, visitors take time too. Okay? One of the odd things about this church, which is magnificent, now you get, okay, is that we always have more visitors here. We have more people in attendance than we have members. That's an oddity. Most, in most churches, you have a huge membership, 25% or so is what attends. Isn't that the right statistic? Okay, SBC churches, here's the average, 270 members, 90 people in attendance. Okay, here we have 200 members 
And in our highs, 285 people in attendance. Our average, 235 people in attendance. Okay? This is not a bad thing. That is, we're out evangelizing. We're out in the highways and byways. We're out spreading the gospel. We're inviting people who aren't members here to come. And as a matter of fact, a lot of the people who have become members came and stayed here for a while, really checked us out because we're weird, get it. But they liked it. But you know what? They still take care. If, if their families are struggling, we'll still counsel them. If they still want to sit and have a meeting, we'll still talk to them. So on, so on, so on. Okay? So it's a legitimate question to ask, what about elders? What about spreading us too thin? And there are times we feel very spread. So, we will be proposing to you that we take on another full-time vocational elder. Uh, we've looked at the, we've crunched the numbers. The man that we think is best suited for this, and we're going to talk about a whole lot of other things that we're going to add uh, proposals to, to you in the next couple of weeks. But the man we've prayed about, we've searched, we've thought it through, uh, I don't think we've argued, but we've certainly had our good debates. Uh, and then the Lord really put it on our hearts. And we all immediately said, yeah, that's it, is Tom. So one of the things we're going to propose to you is that Tom becomes a full-time vocational elder to help carry the load here. And we are also talking about adding, some, adding another non-vocational elder down the road. We're, we've already talked that over too. So yes, that's certainly there. Uh, is it possible we're going to add deacons? I think we're going to have to at some point. You know, it's just an obvious thing. The care of the people, the practical care of the people uh, becomes an issue the bigger the people get. And we don't want to spread them too thin either, and we have great deacons. <clears throat> they really do a good job. Yes? question is, what are the other thoughts of how to maintain unity? That's next week. Sorry, I can't answer it. <laughs> and I'm glad it was you. <laughs> yes? Yeah, uh, we don't know. Oh, question. Where will we be while we do the construction? Now, a lot of the construction, like this area here, really won't displace us that much. Because we'll do it in the summer. We don't have Sunday school. So that's okay. When we go into the sanctuary, it will displace us because they're going to have to go in and run pipes all the way through the entire sanctuary for the sprinkler systems. So everything will be torn out. This, these walls will be torn out, so on and so forth. So we'll have to do like we did before. We'll have to rent a facility. You know, I don't know if we'll get a big place in Union or, or something like that. But we will have to displace for the time of the work. Yeah. Other questions? All right. Our banker says it won't happen for free. Uh, by the way, our banker really likes us. Okay, so basically what we're looking at, can you all see if I stand like this? All right, I'll switch back and forth. Um, the building improvement itself, $200,000 roughly. Now when we get quotes right now and the work is going to happen in the summer, um, they give you what's called a, a soft quote. That is, they overestimate 5 to 10% all the contractors, all the steel producers, everything like that. And I say steel because you have to understand that the, in three-hour burn walls and stuff like that, they don't use wood two-by-fours anymore. They use metal two-by-fours, okay, because it doesn't burn. It melts, but it doesn't burn. Uh, so this is, we, we think, a high number, but we don't know how much. Prices go up by the time we get ready to do it. Right now, prices are down. And they think they're going to stay down, so it's a good time to do this. But it just, you know, just surprise. Parking lot, $41,000. AV requirements. And let me see if I can explain that. Um, right now, and have some of you been on the forum to see the sermons are now being 
videotaped as well? Did you know that? You don't have to just listen to them anymore. You can actually watch them. Okay, so that's going to continue with better quality. We're going to start taping, uh, videoing, one Sunday school class at a time. So that if it's Systematic Theology 1, you'll be able to go on there, see a teacher who taught Systematic Theology 1 teaching it to you. So if you miss a week, if you're a student, you're gone during that time, whatever, no problem. You'll be able to see the classroom. So there'll be a little platform put right up in here and a situation just like Jeremy's doing right now. Somebody will be back there monitoring, taping, videotaping. You'll be able to see this, for instance, after we're done. Okay? So that's about $7,000. And then the music and stage and the amplification requirements that we talked about, about $15,000. That's 263 plus there's going to be some office furniture needed. It's up another office. Roughly 275 or less is what we're looking at. Okay? You'd say, what about chairs? We have enough chairs to do the expansion of the sanctuary based on what we have still spare in the back and all these chairs here. So we're not going to have to buy chairs there. Say, so what about the prayer room? We're going to use the black chairs that we now use in the fellowship hall. That's the chairs we'll use in the prayer room. So there shouldn't be any costs as far as buying a bunch of chairs to fill up the sanctuary or the prayer room. Okay? And in the fellowships, we've already addressed that. Many of them will have to meet off-site. If we decide to meet here on-site, it's okay. We'll just be broken up into Sunday school classes and things like that and have to go sit like that. Okay? Any questions on that so far? Yes? question is, if we approve Tom as a full-time elder, will he have an office? Yes. That's why office furniture, and this will become his office. One of the great joys of this, I'll switch now. One of the great joys of this is that there will be a window. You know this window that's in Lee's office here? We're going to put that there, and a door. One of, the, one of the difficulties now is if a woman has to come in and receive counsel, like uh, Lee and I had to do this the other day. A woman needed some counsel. Lee said, Nate, come on up here. We had a two-hour meeting because we just don't do that. You know, there has to be somebody here. Uh, it's not that we don't trust. It's, it's just appearances of evil, right? Okay, so there's, there's a great help here by having this office side by side, uh, even with a window there so that there is some privacy, but that accountability is immediate by having somebody here. Plus, it opens up a lot more time uh, to do these, this kind of work. Plus, some of the things we're going to present to you in the next couple of weeks is going to take more work, uh, somebody to oversee it. Uh, okay, so, yeah, that's where he'll go. Uh, some of the office equipment will be pushed into this room because it is big. Conference table will still remain in there. And then we're going to put a desk and stuff in here for our interns to use as well. Okay? That's the office furniture. Yes. I think this is where we should make clear rule for um, actual elder recommendation to vote on this will happen at a members meeting. We just want to yes. get all this information out now so that we can That's great. be thinking about it as we lead up to that. Time. Yes. Lee made the uh, point that we're not voting on this today. Uh, we're having a members meeting on January 22nd. Well, what we're doing is trying to get information out to you, let you pray about it, let you think of through what we have thought through for a year now, maybe. Um, this didn't just come to us, you know. It wasn't, we didn't have a dream and woke up with it. Um, yeah, we want you to have these seeds. We want you to think it through. We, we want you to pray with us. Um, you know, maybe somebody would just love to donate 265 or 275 I don't know. You know, maybe somebody will drive in and say, I'm carrying, I'm taking care of it. And if you think it has never happened to a church before, you're wrong. It actually has. A church in town here. Somebody drove in one day, handed a check for, I think, $175,000 and drove off. Okay? So it can happen. We also have talked to bankers because it may not happen that way. <laughs> All right. So I understand. I understand. <clears throat> but 
Uh, yeah, so that's what's going on there. Oh, yeah, we're going to give Tom a window, too, because he might like staring out the window. I don't know. So, anyways, that's, yeah, that's where that's going to all take place. All right, any other questions? Yes. The comment about the window, it is nice to have that so you can just come in. Yeah. You know, guys that hate this, Yeah. It wasn't around it, it was. Yeah. Okay. And basically, I think from what I've seen, we're down to 400,000. We're down, oh, the question has been when we started the renovation before, it was a half a million. And what are we down to now? We're down to 390 now. And we'll probably be down to close to 380 if we agree to this by the time we do it. Yeah. We've been diligent paying it off. In less than three years, and we've paid off $110,000 of principal so far. It's pretty good. Yes? Well, yeah. Uh, when we show you the figures, we're going to have to, we're going to have to, oh. Question was, what basically is the fiscal responsibility of every member? It's, you're not really fiscally responsible for anything because we can't liquidate the building, but right now it's like $3,700 or something, isn't that what we figured? And it'll drop to $3,300 with the new loan uh, per member. So as members are added, that changes and drops down. Uh, but actually, this building if you were to go and rebuild this building from scratch, it would take $1.6 million, okay? We bought this building for $225,000. We put in $25,000 worth of parking lot. That's how much asphalt has changed over the years. <clears throat> we then invested another half a million dollars in that. So, so far, we have three quarters of a million dollars in this building and the property, okay? Um, when we go over the figures, you'll see we're going to add to that some. We have not overrun ourselves with, we're not, we're not over, uh, over, what do they call that? Uh, upside down on our building. Okay, we, we own a fabulous piece of property. As a matter of fact, uh, Lee and I actually went and walked through a church with our banker that had a little more room for a sanctuary, had a bunch of buildings about the same square footage we had here. Uh, their property is valued at four point something million dollars and they were willing to swap with us uh, if they could have our building in 2.1 cash. Okay, Because they like our building. That was the president of our bank who did that. So this is a fine facility. Um, you can't replace it for the money we're talking about at all. Okay, any questions? Any other questions? Yes? Yeah, I imagine we will have an increase in the budget. I know that we're currently getting more than what our budget requirement is now. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of curious. Mm -hmm. Where are we going on that? All right, basically he wants to know what's this going to cost us. All right. At this point, everybody see this? Should I take it up some more? Or everybody, we're okay. At this point, we pay. F take it up some more. At this point, we pay five and three quarter percent on a fifteen-year loan. Now that's odd in its own right, as I explained before when we took the loan, because usually there's a five-year balloon. This is the way banks cover themselves. They'll give you an interest rate for five years, then they'll come back and refinance you at whatever the new interest rate is at the time. Okay. We're basically being given a loan like uh, somebody who has a house, but at corporate rates. The bank is very pleased with us, so they're willing to offer, if we want to redo this, a 15-year loan at five and a quarter percent. So we'll lose a half a percent on the entire loan. They'll go back and refinance the whole thing for us. Uh, we have, in checking, uh, remember last year we paid off 40000 We had about 100000 We paid off 40000 of our loan. 
we now have about 102,000 or so in cash. So that's been replenished in the last three months or so. Things are going really well. If we, if we were to spend, 675 is the number we need. If These are the breakdowns. So if you borrow the whole thing and we don't pay any more on our principal, which we would, this would be the monthly payment and annualized would be 64,164, about 10,000 more than what we're paying now annually. Okay, so this isn't a huge chunk uh, in order to expand. I, this is a hard way to talk about this, but pe people represent dollars when you talk about finances. I, I know that's not why we're doing this, but you have to use that as a figure. Okay, so for instance, we took in uh, 22 new members last year. Our income went up eight, over $18,000 for the year, about $350 a, a week on an average. Okay? So you can say, well, you know, college students don't pay much and all that kind of stuff. True. But that hasn't affected our ability to pay our bills. And because of the membership it, growth is not just college students, it's also people who have jobs, families that they carry the load. And we're always pleased to do that. We set this church up that way. This isn't new. We've been doing this for years and years and years, and God has honored it. And, you know, in some ways, some of the people who were college students are here now, and they're working because they just didn't move back home. They, they got jobs here, and we still have them. So when you talk about growth, you have to talk about the addition of dollars as well. All right, so now if I can help you with the budget a little bit. Uh, if we took on the $10,000 uh, a year and we take Tom on, we wouldn't start him until mid-year. Uh, we will still, if now remember our giving went up this year $350 a week. If we only factor in $100 a week growth, which hasn't happened for years and years and years, then we will still have a surplus at the end of next year. It's, it's, not, it's not hard. If you factor 2013, and we've crunched all these numbers already, uh, and you add $200 a week growth to that. So I'm saying in two years, if we do this building, if we take on a man full time, vocationally, and if you take the money over the course of two years, I'm saying $300, less than one year's growth, we will break about even on expenditures versus uh, income over those two years without touching the $102,000 that's in the bank. So we're, we're fiscally sound. This isn't, a, this isn't a risk, really. The risk would be, what if we don't grow? Okay, it's a risk. It's not been our trend for the last uh, nine, ten years that we know. Okay, so it is a risk. Uh, what if all, you've all of you lose your jobs? Okay. Uh, it could happen, I suppose. But bottom line of it is, if the economy becomes so bad that everybody loses their job, the bank is not coming to get our building because there's nobody who can buy it because we won't be the only ones in that case. You could say, well, what if a few families lose their job and we have to help them? We have $102,000 in the bank, and we wish to help. Oh, yeah, and 5500 in storehouse right now, which is what we use for our members, and that's being added to every month. Now, 5500 is down just because we gave Andy and Laura $1,500 to take with them to Africa. So, yes? Well, not just a comment, I guess. I mean, that's just basing off of the membership we have now. The idea is yes. we'll have more finances. Yeah, that's basing off now with a cost of living increase over the next two years. That's correct. It's not, it's not factoring growth. If we grow at the rate we're growing right now, then we will uh, basically add 40 new members or more and... 22 members was $18,000 plus. Okay. So, yes? If we are growing, if we continue to grow at the same rate, how long will it 
Yeah, that's a good question. If we continue to grow at the same rate, how long will this last? It will last approximately seven to nine years, depending on the rate. If we grow at a rate of 50 uh, people every two years, then we're looking at about seven years, probably. If we do an average of 18 or so, then we're looking at eight or nine years. In the meantime, if we reach max by then, uh, you have to understand that you'll be taking in probably $200,000 more per year than you take in right now. So our goal is, before we have to do anything else, hopefully we can pay off what we have or be real close. And that's with the addition of an elder, well, as a vocational elder. Questions? This is a lot, I know, but that's, that's why we're giving it to you early and taking the time to do it. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the only um, source you're drawing that from? That For us, the the question is, the Martin plant didn't reduce our membership. Is that the only source I'm using? It is for us. Yes, because we're an oddball church. But other churches have planted testify somewhere. And, and Lee's saying other churches that have planted other churches testify the same way. And yes, we do plan on planning more churches, yes. But that's another week. More questions? The question is, do we know how many the Martin plant has now? They've added some, but I don't know how many. It's been slow growth, but... Bottom line of it is they went into a field that was pretty much against them to start with. Uh, there had been many church splits in that area. Uh, actually, people from Martin came to us and said, we want, we want you to help us start a church. And so we had them here for a couple of years and then started a church. So it's been, they, they are solid and they're solid financially, but they're, the growth has been slow. Yes. Do we want to? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to address uh, Ryan's question on how do we continue to minister to people well yeah. and maintain unity and um, things that we want to see ourselves uh, accomplish as far as purpose is. Right. I think that's a good way of putting it. We're going to be talking about how do we, how do we deal with the people that we have, meet their needs, so on and so forth, keep unity, and then some dreams we have, such as church planning and so on and so forth like that, dealing with missionaries. One of the things, let me address something here. One of the questions you may have, or one of the statements you may make is, but I don't know anybody, everybody here. I like small churches, so on and so forth. If you like small churches, I'm not sure why you're here at this point, because we're not small. But bottom line of it is, the Bible doesn't say that we must know everyone in the church. The Bible does, I think, lead us to believe carefully that everyone must be known, if that makes sense. That is, part of the things we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks are how do we keep track of everybody? How are we going to make sure their needs are met? How do we become, do we have intimacy with other people who are here? How does oversight look as you get bigger. Now, oversight in a church, and we've really wrestled with this and even changed over time as we've looked at scriptures, but oversight, one of the first and main goals of oversight is the perseverance of your soul. That is, there will come a day when the four of us will stand before God and fire, the fire of God's thought processes and the scriptures will start saying, now, who's genuine and who's not genuine, who persevered and who didn't? Okay. That's serious. We, got, we have to stand up to that. Okay. That's first and foremost in our thoughts. That's why the gospel is preached over and over and over and over again here, because the gospel is what perseveres. 
you are also responsible and you are one of the agents of, that God uses. The local church is one of the agents that God uses to help persevere the saints. That is, you are not here by yourself. And if you think you live there by yourself, you're just sadly mistaken. You are to be responsible for other people and other people are to be responsible for you. Bottom line. Scriptural. The fact that you know each person here, not a scriptural mandate. The fact that you're known and that you know others and are investing back and forth, scriptural mandate. Okay? Even if you look at the Israelites back in the Old Testament, when they got so big and Moses was getting worn out, the Lord instructed him to divide them up into groups. And responsible men were given groups of people to look at and say, care for them, help think through what they need to do, bring the tough things to us. So we're not trying to run away from any duty here. We're simply saying human beings can only do so much. And God has given ways to do that. And we've thought some through, and we're going to present them over the next couple of weeks. Does everybody understand what I'm saying here? Before getting into too much there. Yeah. I think you are. Getting into too much. Yeah. All right. Um, we have three minutes left. Oh, three minutes. We talked about 665. Yeah. All right, here's the deal on these. If you want to cut out the baptismal, you can save about $20,000. Save about $20,000. That's a choice. Okay, we're recommending that we have it. For several reasons, I'll talk real quick. Um, the baptismal we have now makes it difficult for some folks to be baptized. So, for instance, I don't know if you all have rejoiced over this or not, but, of course, Barbara Perry's mama got saved at 93 years old. Wow. Right? And wants to be baptized. Sorry, we can't do it in the one we have. Helping this 93-year-old lady up those steps and back down in that little... It's, so, we're going to wind up at another church that has a baptismal and um, baptize her. Fantastic. If you are... Seriously thinking about giving up on praying for one of your family members, you need to stop. 93 years old. Okay? So, and the other thing is, it makes a statement, and one of our deacons even brought up, he's got small kids that he wants to have that in front of him all the time. That one day you, if the Lord gives you faith, will stand before God's people and testify through baptism that you have been saved. We have money in the bank, so we can also take some of that money out, depending on what level we want to go, and use some of that money to help finance this. It's not what we're recommending, but it is a possibility. It isn't sin if that's what we decide to do, <clears throat> but we want to make sure we have that safety net there to cover what we're doing. Okay? And at any point in time, if we want to, we can always pay down on the debt faster, just like we did last year. So it's not like we can't go back and fix that. So that's why we're recommending those numbers. And we are recommending the 665 at this point. We should say to you that our plan is to go three weeks and then leave the last week for questions. So if you don't have yeah. questions. Right. The plan is to talk about different subjects for three weeks. Lee will have next week. Tom will have the following week. And then the last week we'll come back and have questions and answers again if you have some more. And that week should fall after the members meeting, I believe. Isn't that right? I think that's right. Okay. All right. Any fast final questions because we want to get out of here on time? Yes. It is, it's exciting to us. It's a proof that preaching the gospel really does work. There are people who want to hear it, you know. Any other questions, final thoughts? Well, great, let's pray. Thanks, Lord. Uh, it's been a fast talk. Uh, great questions. Um, love the hearts of the people. 
but we want to act wisely. We want to act according to your will. Guide us now. Um, hear our prayers as we seek wisdom. Uh, send in those who... I, I actually do know of a church that money came in that way. It would be great if you want to do it that way, but uh, help us be people who are willing to walk by faith if that's what's required. We are grateful for what you've done here. I've watched so many even come here as young men and women who are now married, raising families, uh, teaching their children the gospel, faithful leadership type people. I want to again say publicly, as you know we have said many times, what a pleasure it is to be an elder, and I speak for my brothers here at this place, uh, with these people who love you and love your word and uh, fight for the souls of human beings. And just so that we now can say it, we are so grateful for saving Barbara's mom at 93. It gives us hope and uh, it excites our soul that one day her crippled little body will walk and dance with us in, in the heavenlies with Jesus Christ. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.